Hey everybody and welcome back to the channel. So you guys ask me all the time whether I know any good plugins from Maya. Well, that's exactly what we're going to look at today. We're going to be looking at a product called Verge 3D. And I have to say, this is a game changer. If you are into product presentation, if you want your portfolio to look professional, this is next level stuff, right? Here we go. Okay, everybody. Well, you guys have been asking me for a long time. Tell us about some very cool plugins for Maya. Well, guys, this is it. This thing is awesome. It's called Verge 3D, right? And what you're seeing in front of you is something that has been fully created in Maya. Now, this is very interactive and I'll show you guys how to download the software, install the software, how to import your models, how to do all of that stuff, right? It's not going to be a tutorial. I'm going to show you guys basically the functionality of it for the simple reason that Verge 3D has a full tutorial series on YouTube that's free to watch and it takes you through all the paces. I wouldn't advise this for people that are absolutely beginners in Maya, but if you want to create something, let's say as a presentation on a website or a product presentation, for example, or maybe just to showcase your uh, character or model, then this might be for you, right? So let's get into this. So this thing is auto rotating right now. It's a Swiss army knife, as you can see. As soon as I click here, it will stop, right? and I can interact with it. I can move it around. I can look at it from all angles, as you can see, right? And you see those little dots where it says I on it? These are basically tags with information. So if I want to name the parts of the knife, I can go and click on one of these and it will say, okay, that's the toothpick, that's the key ring and so forth. Now, as you see, after a number of seconds, it starts to auto rotate. So you can kind of see what's going on. And on the right here, you see different textures that I can choose from. So if I go up here and click on this guy, for example, you see that instantly it changes. And I can go in and out. And the cool thing is there's a limitation to how far I can do that. And that is something you can control as well. So depending on the size of your model or what you want people to see or not see, or a number, you know, or let's say a level of detail you don't want them to see, you can kind of limit that, right? So we'll go back to blue. I can move this around once again, and I can, for example, change it to brown. And again, if I wait a couple of seconds, it will start to auto rotate again, right? Probably one, two, three, there we go. Now that's cool, but what is very, very cool is this. Let's move over to the left right there, right? Now you see a Swiss army knife that is, uh, the top one is open, the bottom one is closed, right? Let's click on the top one. You see all the components of the knife go open, right? Let's click it closed. There you go. Now you can do this with your own model. Now this whole setup here with these buttons to control what's going on here, that is called puzzles in uh, Verge 3D. And what's nice about it is you don't need any coding experience. It's basically a drag and drop puzzle pieces, right? So you would say, okay, I want a timer. You drag in a puzzle piece called timer. Then you have another one where you can put in the number of seconds and you just click them all together. And I'll show you in a second, right? Okay, so this is very really cool. Now let's have a look at how you can get this to begin with, right? We'll just jump over to the website. Okay, so here's their website. It says try 3D Verge right now. And they currently have a version for Blender, for 3ds Max and for Maya. We're gonna be looking at Maya in this case, right? Now you can uh, have a whole bunch of examples that you can look at, a whole bunch of things you can play with. Here's an overview of how those puzzle things work, right? So you just take an event and then you take another section that can control that event and so forth. As you can see, a lot of people using it. So it's cool, cool. Cool to uh, animate little robot type setups and so forth. Okay, so anyway, uh, try 3D Verge, uh, Verge 3D now. So if you click on that, let's give it a sec. You're gonna choose what you want, Blender, 3ds Max or Maya. 
we're going to choose Maya. We're going to get Maya for a Windows machine because that's what I have. I'll click on that. It's going to start downloading. And once it's downloaded, you just simply run it, right? Now, I have already installed it, but I'll just uh, open that up. And I just won't complete the setup, but you get the idea, right? We'll give that a second. There you go. So you're going to hit next. You're going to hit I agree. You're going to hit next. And it's going to install all of this into that path. Like I said, I already did that. Okay. So, but let's say we did this now. Yeah. Then what you're going to do is you're going to open up Maya. And in my case, because I already activated it, you have a Verge 3D up here in the menu top there. If you don't, what you're going to do is go to Windows, Settings Preferences, Plugin Manager. And you're going to make sure that the verge3d.py is clicked on loaded and auto load. Loaded to load it up now, auto load to make sure that it's loaded every time you start Maya, right? Okay, so now you got this. If you go into verge 3D, you have export GITF, you have sneak peek, you have run app manager, and you have export settings. Now, the export GITF will take your model and uh, put it in the app manager in Verge 3D. And I'll show you in a second, right? Sneak peek is if you want to open up a browser to have kind of a sneak peek of what it looks like. And the app manager is, of course, the app manager. So let's open that up. Okay, now all of these here are examples. So uh, one of them here is the Swiss Army knife right here. And then to the right, you see all sorts of buttons going on there. Yeah. So if you hover over this one, you see that it's index.html, which means that if I click on this, it will load up. And there you go, right? There's the guy. Now uh, let's go back and make sure I don't mess this up. Yeah, let's go back. The second one is this guy right here, right? And you run it on the browser, local hosts, and you don't see the puzzles. We'll get rid of that. Then you have the uh, green guy right here. That's to view the scene. And they all seem kind of similar right now, right? But don't worry about that. For now, what you want to worry about is the first one and the second one. And then here, the red one is to open up Maya, right? Open the Maya file which in this case is the Swiss Army Knife. And then over to the right here, you have puzzles to put in that animation. You have a folder that contains your uh, file uh, with all the textures and all kind of stuff, right? This arrow here is to upload it to the web if you're gonna use it like that. And this one will delete everything, so be careful, okay? Right, so how does that work? So in this case, I'm gonna click on this red guy to open up Maya. And because I already have Maya open, I need to make sure that I get the right one. There we go. It's reopening Maya. We'll give that a second. And what it's going to do is it's going to show the, uh, the Maya scene, right? Let's give that a moment. Okay, here we go. So like any other Maya scene, you have an outliner, you have your model, and it's clipping right now because that's how the camera is set. This is your, uh, basically the shape you see in the back there that's been created. Then we got our object inside, which is our, uh, our knife, yeah, like so. And then we have an uh, Arnold lighting setup. We have an HDRI image attached and all that kind of cool stuff, okay? Now, uh, let's say I change something here and um, I want it to be updated in the app manager. What I would do is I would change whatever I want to change and then I would go up to Verge 3D, export the GITF, and it will overwrite the one that I have. So you choose the appropriate folder, you overwrite the file you have, and you have an update, right? So let me just go back into the app manager and kind of show you how you get started. Okay. So again, these are examples. Let's say I want to make something brand new. And this is, again, not a tutorial, just a quick heads up on giving you an idea how it works, right? Because there's a full tutorial series. So I would go in here and I would create a new app because that's what it's called, right? Create a new app, give it a name. Let's call this Maya Tests, something like that, right? We're going to create an app and it says it's been created. Yay. All right, cool. So where do you go? Um, where is he? Where is he? Okay. Uh, Maya tests. And I already made another one, but okay, it's fine. So Maya tests, right? 
Now, by default, if I click on the blue guy, I'll get the default setup, which is a simple cube with a simple background, right? We'll close that out. And then on the right hand here, if I go and click on this, it will open up Maya. We don't have any uh, puzzle set up yet. So if I would go to Maya and let me find it. Yeah, there you go. And that's the thing. It opens up a new version of Maya every time. So be careful with that. Okay. And right here is the default setup. So if I wanted this to be my own model, what I would do is I would take the cube, get rid of it. I would go to file import and we've got the scene right here. Now this is not ideal because we have a whole bunch of things going on, but it's fine. We'll just take this guy right here. And what you would do is you would go to Verge 3D and you would export that, right? Now I don't have the exact path here for that, but that's where I would go. So where would I copy this? I'll show you. If you go back here to the Maya test and you go to the folder right here, that is the location that you want, which would be, and it's on my other screen, right there, right? So it's under Virtual D Maya, Applications, Maya Tests. And what you would do is you would uh, save that out on the root right here, right? And then you would override it. That's how you would do that, okay? But again, this is not a tutorial. It's to give you an idea of how it works. Now, let's just go back to the Virtual App Manager right here, and let's uh, take another example, right? So we saw the Swiss Army Knife. What about the spinner, right? Let's uh, click on the blue guy right here. Here we have a spinner. You can move that around as before. I haven't seen this yet, but I assume as I click on one of these right here, it will change color. And it does. Cool. And I assume if I click on this guy, there you go. Kind of neat, right? Just to give you a couple of examples of what you can do here. Uh, let's see, what else? Scroll animation, that's cool. Okay, so this is the same knife, but it's a different setup. Before we had these buttons, right? And you would click on it and it would open and close and so forth. Uh, that's cool if you're doing a product presentation, but let's say you want to have this on your website. Now, what people do on websites is they scroll down, right? So on the right here, you have this scroll bar thing going on as you would have in any browser. And as I move downwards, look what happens. The knife starts to open and the text scrolls up, right? And if I go even further, it will start to rotate and it will even change color. How cool is that? Now, this is something that you can easily do yourself, right? And where you do all that stuff, like I said before, is in the puzzle uh, setup here. So if we take that specific one, the scroll animation, and we go to the puzzle setup right here, this is basically how they did that, right? Okay, so you have all sorts of things to choose from here. Uh, let's say a selector, and if I click on that, and it's kind of small, you click on an option, you can uh, put it in here, and like I said, I'll just uh, get a bit closer so you can see it. I can put a value in here, and I can click that to something else. And, um, you know, let's say we got a camera, right? And as you can see, these will fit into each other. So this will go in there and then you can click one on there and kind of build it like Legos, right? So long story short, I think this has a lot of potential. And if you decide to give it a try and you made something cool, then uh, please send a link to uh, my Kermis at mhtutorials.com. I would love to see it. And uh, yeah, if you made something really cool, I'll definitely share it on my social media, right? Well, as always, thank you so much for watching. Hit that like button if you enjoyed the video and hit that subscribe button if you didn't do that just yet, right? Thanks for watching. See you guys next time. Bye.